96.1 KLPX, a good day to you. I'm Larry Mack, and on the phone with me right now is singer Doug Ray from the Marshall Tucker Band. They're going to be at the Tucson Music Hall on Saturday night performing with Dave Mason. Hey, uh, Doug, Doug, thank you so much for uh, taking part of a busy day and hanging out with us here today in Tucson a couple days before you're actually going to be uh, performing on stage here. Hey, buddy, anything to do to get out of the snow right here, I, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm in Denver right now. But you know what? It's so good. It's going to be nice to get back to Tucson. So you, the band has been together now 50 years. Did you think Correct. when you started out all those years ago that you'd still be doing this five decades later? No, I was thinking about inventing a cell phone and uh, <laughs> because it hadn't come out yet. We had no idea what was going on with us. You know, uh, we were all of a sudden we back from Vietnam and, and we're looking at each other. I was working in a bank and Toy was a master plumber with his dad. And, you know, George was making teeth or learning how to or something that he'd learned in the military. We had no idea. And, and people, people have asked me those questions before. And I, I can honestly say that we took it literally, everybody says, let's take it one day at a time, mm -hmm. or whatever will be, will be. Well, whatever will be has been, for me, has been 50 years because we've lost those other guys. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason they're, they're up in heaven somewhere, and the other two guys just didn't want to play anymore because they had problems at home that they had to stay at home for. And so, you know, the way we set our company up in the beginning, we... We always wanted just to keep it going, no matter what. And I'm, I kind of wanted to keep it going anyway, since I sang 99% of those songs. And I had no idea. Nobody had any idea. We didn't know that we'd be asked back. You know, if you take yourself back to when you're playing clubs, and they got 40 people, and one minute, one month, you're playing in a 40 seater hall in Manhattan. The next time you go two months later, you're opening for the Allman Brothers sold out show. We didn't have any idea. I, you know, my my hats off to people that recognized our talent, but I, my hats off also to the crowd that has continued to follow us. Being, you know, 50 years is a long time. We've lost a lot of people, a lot of dogs who've passed away. Mm -hmm. that named Marshall and Tucker. A lot of people have just been. You know, I don't think that I can remember any day that it hasn't been a, a perfect day for me. So you obviously still enjoy life on the road. Oh, babe. Yes, I love it. Uh, still 152 days a year. Sometimes I have to go do fly some stuff for radio. But uh, other than that, uh, no, I, I got two buses that I'm looking at out the window right now as it snows on them. And, uh, you know, in a hotel that, you know, didn't even have hotels like this whenever I was first getting back from Vietnam. And, you know, you, you look out and you see the people, you remember the venues, and some of them are gone now, and some of them are still there. They're just as beautiful now to me as they were a long time ago. Some of them are a little beat up. Some of them have gone and left. And, you know, been torn down and turned into a mall. But, uh, uh, you know, there's, yes, I love being on the road. I love the crowd that I have. I love that we're overselling most of our shows and, and really surprised at that. I love the fact that a company came back to us with that have that handle huge acts. The guy saw us at Stagecoach about four years ago and he said one day I'm going to have you on my company <laughs> and he did and that was United Talent Artist and uh, Agency and uh, then Red Light Management who had been my friends for years same people put on Lollapalooza they all got together and they said you know this, this band deserves better than what they're going through right now they turned it into it and made us, made us be able to talk to major radio stations be able to walk in the door any place a lot of tv stations and and you know i i just got older that's all that's happened you know the crowds are coming out the 
crowds have gotten older. Now they're bringing their grandkids. Mm-hmm. I wanted, you know, we play a fair somewhere in Arizona or uh, where uh, anywhere, mm-hmm. play a fair in California and Washington, place like that. They bring their kids and then their grandkids. And then the little story that I have about that is the little girl standing there. We was at an autograph session and after the show. She but she looked twelve to fourteen years old. Mm-hmm. Have grandkids like that, and she looked up and she said, "Would you do this for my grandpa?" I said, "Well, where is your grandpa?" You know, thinking that she'd say, "Well, he's not here anymore or whatever." But she pointed over. He's sitting over there, but he can't stand up for very long. And, and I said, "Well, my goodness, we better go to sit and talk to him." Oh. So he was on that first level. We just, I just stopped doing. I had a security guard go with me. We walked over there. We sit and talk. And he had, uh, he told me that he had a picture when he got back from the war. He got had a picture of me and him standing together when the first year that we ever was out, oh. nineteen seventy three. Wow. Sitting on his mantle. Yeah, I know. So, you know, the 14, and we know, we know now, and you know this better than anybody who your demographics are. I had no idea what demographics meant a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Demographics are from, from 18 to 44 right now. Well, you know, it's crazy, it's too. craziest is, thing I've ever seen. You guys also, you know, you've gotten some songs put in uh, movies that exposes you to a whole different audience as well, and... People know your songs, and do you ever look out at the crowd and you see them singing along? And and, and you're, how does that make you feel when when you you know something you wrote 50, 40 years ago that that crowd knows every word, and sometimes it's people that uh, weren't even alive when you wrote it. That's what's freaky. That's freaky in itself. I have I still have a daughter that's twenty nine and one is forty, and then the two grandkids are ten and twelve. But I'm telling you, when I look out there. And I see those people doing that. I know exactly when, you know, stuff on The Voice, stuff on, uh, you know, the, all the other shows like that. And I hear somebody that's 16 years old singing Can't You See or somebody singing Fire on the Mountain. I always get to publish my publicity agency in Nashville. I get them to get the number and I call these people. Oh, that's great. And wish them good luck. And I think that freaks out people a whole lot. They don't think that they're really talking to me but i think after about 10 minutes they realize it and then, and then later i might see them later i might not i've got a couple of guys right now that i always have come up and we if then we're in their area they did not win but uh some of them did and you know what you stay stay in touch with some of the real the real brotherhood of you know, I didn't realize it then, but I do realize how it works now, and I can help them as much as they can help me. It kind of is a two-way street there. Sure. So what can the audience uh, expect Saturday night at the Tucson Music Hall, and uh, how did you guys end up hooking up with uh, Dave Mason on the tour? Well, first of all, historic rock and roll nominated uh, person serves in there. I knew songs from traffic. I knew songs from all those old things. And, I, you know, you never really, you know, a long time ago when we had albums and album covers, you could read who wrote what song. Mm -hmm. Now you have to have double magnifying glass to figure it out, okay, if if they do put one out. So when everybody said it's feeling all right, you know, not feeling too good myself, I mean, how you know, the offer came up, and they said, well, Dave is thinking about doing one. I said, if you can talk him into doing this, I'll do 120 shows. And he jumped. I jumped. Everybody was happy. We were all satisfied. No, you know, there's not one of those meetings that lasted more than 15 minutes because everybody wanted to be together. Oh, that's great. It was beautiful. It really and truly was. It was it was a beautiful thing because a lot of these times you get these guys that rock rock and roll finicky. Country is a little bit easier because they're following us. You know, I get these guys like Kenny Chesty coming up asking me, "Man, how in the world did you get to who you are to be that nice guy?" And I went, "Hell, I'm not nice. You just don't know me." <laughs> and here he is later on his own land and on his own island and stuff like that, and invite me all the time. But you know what? His success comes from being a generally nice guy, 
not afraid of the people, and never thinking that he's above anybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're just regular people that happen to be very, very fortunate to you and your job and my, me and my job. We're fortunate that these people accept us, and the real ones will always be there for you. How has the tour been going so far? Well, we're overselling, which makes it where it might extend until next year. Oh, great. But we're overselling a lot of halls like that. And uh, and I think it's because of the combination. People like a little history. They like a lot to see where who's going where, what we're doing. Plus, they want to go back to that memory. The biggest thing is I think they want to go back to a memory. They want to be presented in their heart and listen to a song that had some meaning to their heart at that particular day or time. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people are still coming back. And and we have oversold probably out of 17 shows that we've done so far uh, with this group. Uh, it's been so, all but one is sold out. So, you know, I sold out and oversold. Okay. And we like that standing room only because we look back there and those people are just as happy as the people drinking down front. <laughs> so what can the audience expect on Saturday night? I know you're probably going to play your big ones like Can't You See, Fire in the Mountain, and, and, and the hits. Uh, how deep are you going to get? You know what? Uh, I'm I'm working on one right now, and I was just asked that question uh, with one of the guys in the band. Man, we learned that song. Why don't we do it? And I went, you know what? I had completely forgotten about that song. We're going all the way back. We certainly go back to 1973 and 1974 and all that stuff. But every so often we'll play a song that's a little newer, 1980, and then uh, going on into 90, and then songs like Dog Eat Dog World and things like that. That they're they're so deep that a lot of radios could not play them. Okay, because of the extensive extensive time that it takes, and you know. Stations run on money and advertisement mm-hmm. and personalities. So, you know, there's some, hey, I realize it more than anybody, but there's nothing more fun than to get somebody to send me an email or a text on my cell phone, and I'm I'm just kind of sitting around somewhere in some hotel. And I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina now, and also Spartanburg, South Carolina still. But when I get it, and they're showing me a picture of it on their you know, it shows you what song's playing on what station. And they send me a picture of it and says, just riding along. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's one of our songs. And we hadn't even thought about it. You know, it, you don't think that that reach is still out there. And it is. Do you have a song of yours that it's like, do you have a favorite? I, I know that songs to musicians and, and songwriters are like children. And that's a hard question sometimes. But I mean, is there a favorite? Uh, you probably know of this song. A lot of people did not have the opportunity to play it or even place it, place it anywhere. But the countryside of Marshall, you know, we just played the Ryman the other night, mm-hmm. and that was complete sellout. And it was beautiful, and it's just, you know, it's a blessing for us to be invited there. We're just honored, and we'll go back to the Ryman for the Christmas special for kids and uh, before the end of the year. But In My Own Way is a song uh, that a lot of people, had, they had heard it, but it went by. Okay? Mm-hmm. But uh, In My Own Way, there's a special place that's in my heart. And it's occupied by you, and there ain't no one on God's earth going to take you away. Those kind of songs relate to people, which relates to the parts of the movies that these people write. Mm-hmm. And we got about five or ten of those that I can't even talk about yet because they're movies for next year. Oh, great. Or Netflix and Amazon and Apple, you know. There's so much more places now to get your music played. Thank goodness. And mm-hmm. and you know what? And if it hadn't been for older guys and younger women that are in the business now, they're saying, God, I really have never listened to you guys. And that's okay. There's so much music out there. Thank God there's 10,000 records or songs released every day. Mm-hmm. Let us keep on, let's, let us 
hey, we're blessed that we're being able to, to listen to different music and me having the ability to hear a girl 15 years old on The Voice and she's singing a song, not one of ours, but she's singing a song that I'm familiar with. And I'm, my girlfriend looks at me and she says, what in the world are you gearing up for? I said, because maybe that girl is going to be Whitney Houston one day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. And my God, what kind of blessing is that? I got blessed by listening to her sing. You know, I always think about there's a group of kids sleeping in a van somewhere in middle America tonight, not realizing they're going to be the next big thing. They, they have no idea. That's why I try to help guys and girls. That, there's one girl that I've got on Cirque du Soleil, and uh, she was 10, and her dad had to go with her everywhere. But it was, and she, she did the Michael Jackson uh, thing after he died, you oh, know, wow. and Yes, yes. So she was out there playing with her hair and all that stuff, makeup and all that stuff, and everything that was beautiful. But she, her dad had to go because she was so young. And they did like four or 500 shows. And I've helped two or three different groups do stuff. Plus, you already know that my nephew is Zach Brown, one of the singers and, and full <laughs> all around guitar players for Zach Brown. Well, I mean, that band, uh, just like you guys, knows how to straddle the genres of music. You know what? There's nothing better. Give me a give me a country song and then give me a rock and roll song and then give me an old rhythm and blues song. Mm-hmm. I'll show you where there's not much difference. Yeah, there isn't. You're right. You know, no. it's uh I think no, sometimes it's, it's meaning. I think the the difference sometimes is in the audience and how they dress. <laughs> Well, speaking of dress, I can tell you another funny story, and then I know I've got to let you go. I've probably kept you too long. But I'm sitting in front of the bus one night. We didn't play till later, and I thought the hall might have been bigger. You know, it was a big hall, but it had a backside to it for smaller groups. And uh, I'm watching these guys walk by, and their pants was halfway down to their knees. And a big chain was on the side. They was, you know, too cool for school. This mm-hmm. has been years, and I'm thinking, these guys are going to whatever the hell is going on next door. You know, there has to be another group over there. Nope. About the fourth song, I looked out. They're about five, six rows back, standing, and they're singing, Can't You See? <laughs> yep. That's awesome. So that See, that's when I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson that you can't always tell who people are by what you're seeing. <laughs> That is so true. That is so true. Uh, yes. I got one more question for you, Doug. It's, uh, yes, sir. You know, yeah, I know you love playing live. I, I know that it's going to be a great show on Saturday night. I'm going to be out there at the Tucson Music Hall. But right. it, is any new music on the horizon? Do you have any? Are you working on a new record or a new song, song or anything like that? Well, the, uh, I started off by saying, you know, we own our own record label. Mm-hmm. And we also own those old masters. Mm-hmm. And the third party is, is there is absolutely no reason for us to hurry and put another record out that's not in – we're not in a position to sell a lot of records right now mm-hmm. and to get a lot of airplay that would be different than some of the oldies and, and better songs that was written by Toy Caldwell. You okay. know? And, of course, I wrote a bunch of them, and so did Tommy. But mine's getting played in Brussels, Belgium in a movie, you know, and who would think that? I mean, I I wrote that song on the back of a Burger King bag. (laughs) So, I mean, you know, why things end up the way they are, I'm fascinated at the way life works. There is always room for more, though. Just have them keep coming. All right. Well, Doug, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. I promise you, when you're here on Saturday night, you will not be looking at snow. Um, maybe some uh, cactus <laughs> and stuff, but uh, no snow here. So, well, you just come on backstage early and say, introduce yourself so that I know you are, and, and we can say hello. 